How's it going folks? Brian Cusco here at Triple B. Today we've got Mr. Tom Harbin on for you guys. He's going to show us some of his beautiful snakes. And Tom also was a big positive influence for me when I was first producing my first clutches. Gave me a nice boost in the right direction. We'll talk about that a little bit too. You're watching Triple B TV. I'm glad to finally get you on one of these things. I know I've come by, stopped by the booth and like, can you hear me okay in those? I, like, you're fine, 100%, cool. yeah. Um, I've come by the booth and done a couple quick features, but right. I've been wanting to have right. you sit down and actually do one of these, like, and finally it's happening. Well, thank you. Because you, you. you gave me, a, uh, I don't know if you know that you gave me a big uh, jump start in feeling successful in what I was trying to do when I first, it was actually my second clutch. You got one of the animals out of it. Yes. It, it was actually Ben Fugger who reached out to me, said I, that my, my buddy Tom okay. is, is yeah. looking to maybe get a snake from Triple B. And he checked, you checked with him first to see if he knew me. And luckily, me and Ben have been talking a little bit. And he right. said, right. I remember he sent me messages like, he's like, can I trust you? Oh, no. No. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recommend Tom for you. And if you mess it, like, he didn't say it just like that. But, but he did ask if he could trust me. That but, was the message. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh. like, I don't, I don't want to send Tom down to somewhere where. Okay. And I, I really appreciated you picking up that animal, man. Because it, it made me, it gave me a good good feeling about where I was trying to go. Right. With producing animals and being able to sell them. And when it was you that actually wanted to purchase one of my animals, I, I felt it made me feel proud. Okay. Well, I'm happy. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm proud of that too. Yeah, yeah. Because you're you're a vet. Right? Yeah, I'm a veterinarian. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. You have been for a long time. Or... Uh, forty years. Yeah, that's quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've had a day or two. So, do you do you work with snakes at the office, or is it? We do. It's it's not our primary thing, but uh, since I'm a keeper and a breeder, and you know, I get a lot of reptile stuff. But if I had to depend on it, I couldn't do it for a living. So, um, but we probably one percent of our practice, which is not a lot, but I see a couple a week, you know. The ones that, whatever's in your area that has, yeah. they know, kind yeah. of know to come yeah. to you. And, and we're in a small um, area right now. We're in Montgomery, Alabama. Hey, it's a big town, but there's not a lot of uh, reptile activity there. Sure, sure. So, well, I, uh, I, I'm sure that the few people that do keep out there are pretty glad they could have somebody yeah, like you to come yeah. to, to. Well, you know, a lot of my old people still drive four hours to see me with their reptiles. So Wow. So, you know, that makes me feel good. Yeah, it's awesome. And I can still help. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you've been doing this show since the beginning. Basically. It goes way back, and I have forgotten, but pretty much the beginning. Yeah, yeah. We go back eight or ten years before they added the March show, I know for sure. So, and then I picked up Arlington two years ago, so I guess I'm part of the family. <laughs> nice. <laughs> have, have you been working with uh, ball pythons specifically in your reptile keeping? I got my first morph ball python in 03, when it was still sort of at the frenzy level. And uh, so we bought in big, and uh, but before that, I was doing colubrids for 30 years, and I guess I started breeding snakes in the mid 80s, 85, 86, you know, and hatching my own stuff, and uh, but then it's just evolved into everything else. Now it's the western hogs and the balls, and you know, a few corns and a few boas, just so I can, you know, not get bored. Cool. So yeah, yeah. Well, if we could. We got a few animals here that you produced that we could take a look, quick look at. It would be uh, absolutely, absolutely. So Monarch is obviously your your baby. Monarch is my baby. I was Rance Meyer's first customer, and uh, he's the one who found the Monarch gene. I think most people know that story. Bought a pair of pastels from somebody, from somebody, from somebody, and hatched out G stripes and Monarchs in the first clutch. And so that was the beginning. And then I bought my first animal from Rance and. I've pretty much carried the torch. Rance is out of it now. He's sold out. So, uh, so it's my it's my baby now. So yeah. And it, I've heard you talk about it on videos before, and I know myself. But for everybody that's that's watching that maybe hasn't seen it, it's, it's kind of like Ultramel in a way. I mean, it is recessive as well too, right? It is, it is simple. So it's so, much like Ultramel, but Ultramel, but much darker, much more contrast, much more contrast, much darker. They keep that contrast no matter what combo that I've put them on so far. And uh, you know, the Ultramels are great morph. Looking at right it in on. person here, it's it's almost uh, kind of a seems like it's a disservice to, c to compare it to Ultramel because it's obviously yeah. much higher contrast, much darker. Yeah, it, it does not look Ultramel at all. Now this is a pastel. I did not bring the single gene, 
Uh, this one's also carrying the genetic stripe, which doesn't show up. But this is sort of what you start off with is the basic morph. Monarch, if you want pastel, you go this. So anyway, we've made the pastel on top of the G-stripe uh, Monarch. We've made the super pastel. Um, the thing that happened for me two years ago. I saw that. I know yeah, what you're going to say. You know, three years before that, I made my own triple heads. Clown, genetic stripe, Monarch. Um, ended up with five eggs. One egg died along the way, so I had four eggs. They hatched, uh, three males, one female. So I'm thinking, oh crap, you know, how's this gonna go? So anyway, I finally bred two years ago, uh, the triples to the triples, ended up with the triple, the genetic stripe, monarch clown, which is an awesome snake. I don't have it with me because she's getting ready to breed. She, wow. She's there. Nice. And uh, then I also made a uh, genetic stripe clown and a clown, all of those possible head for everything else. So that really jump-started this project when I did the triple. That caught a lot of attention. Yes, and, it did. Uh, so, well, you know, that, that's, that's fun for me. And uh, I'm thinking, you know, how can that happen to a guy like me, you know? But anyway, you're in this for the long game. You can't jump in, go buy a few snakes and start breeding and, you know. But anyway, so uh, I've been at this for six, seven years on the Monarchs. It's starting to pay off, you know, and starting to do some cool things. Uh, working on the pods. Uh, Pied Monarchs, that's coming. That'll be cool to see. Yeah, that's coming. Um, I've got two more projects that if my Monarch family is listening to me, real soon there's going to be Leopard Cryptic Monarchs. Ooh. So, yeah, I can't wait to see that yeah. one. Yeah. So it's coming. It's coming. Uh, maybe not too far off. So, anyway, um, Monarch's still got a lot of feet under it. A lot of miles to go. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah. yeah. It's a, looks and. The, from what I've seen, the adults don't change much from babies. They really don't. I mean, this thing is bright right now. The female, the adult female, they've got two that look just like this. They just stay bright. They don't fade like pastels do. The monarch holds color. If you see orange on babies, you're going to see orange as adults, which is, you know, not common. Not as common ball as python. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So um, the contrast is still there. And uh, so you, you can, with assurance, tell people, hey, this is what you're going to get three years from now be the same thing so yeah and not everything does that so, true so i like that yeah me too so hang in there for monarchs we got a lot of surprise coming we, we've got a, probably a couple of dozen people in the united states that have monarch genetics now and so they're going to be doing stuff that i'm not doing so we're going to see a lot of cool stuff yeah man. yeah yeah a lot of cool stuff awesome. yeah what I else we got hiding down here you know um clown has sort of been one of my favorite things and I finally narrowed myself down to three projects, and clowns is one of them. And everybody loves clowns. Um, but this, why, why do you think this? Why do you think everybody loves? Because I love cl clown is my favorite right. morph as well. What right. is it? I mean, obviously it creates really cool snakes, which it is does. probably the reason it, it does. does. Like, but what? what I've not it? figured that out. I, I think the name clown it, it sort of draws you in. You know, yeah. clown really. Well, not, why do you not call too it a clown? Serious. <laughs> yeah, not too serious. Yeah, it's kind of fun. So, um, but there's a lot of genes that really do stuff to clowns that doesn't do it to any other any other you know morph so you get a lot of trick you know looking stuff you get a lot of fading you get a lot of i don't you know just uh blending so just like this guy this is a six gene animal here whoa yeah that's it's, more than i would have guessed it's a mojave orange dream inchy leopard pastel and clown so it's all here and uh so i, I love this thing Love this thing. Oh, I almost would have guessed there was coral glow in there somewhere. Oh wait, you did say you did say banana. The, okay, did, you I, did. did I leave that banana? Okay, mm, maybe not. Maybe I think, not. I think I left that. It is banana. Yes, okay. it is. Yeah. Um, so anyway, this is the best thing that I've ever done. So, you know, and she's on my table for sale for a price. You know, uh, and she's not your fifteen hundred dollar clown. She. She. <laughs> yeah. She. She. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, she's she's going to replace her mother, which is an uh, inchy banana pet clown. So, uh, you know, not that she's leaving, but this is going to be her uh, her come along. So one of the other things that I'm strong in is the dream sickles. And when I saw Ralph Davis's first dream sickles, I think everybody in the country said, holy cow. You know, they might have said other things, too. <laughs> you know, so uh, so dream sickles are big for me. And. And I'm, I'm working on combos there, black pastel dream circles, you know, and Kobelko's done a lot of stuff with that too. A lot of stuff that I haven't even tried to do. But then with my dream circles this year, I hatched out this this girl. So uh, I don't even know what really to call her, but she's got pod, awesome. pod patterns. Oh, yeah. She's banana. She 
is 100% cat lavender, and then she got a big ringer, or a double ringer there. Look at that thing, man. So isn't that awesome? So uh, she's actually on my table too, for sale, but for a hefty price. So uh, I'd love to just keep her in my rack, you know. Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of how you put your everything maybe has a price right but it it's does. just like some is just too high like you price the thing like, if somebody really wants it more than me then they're gonna have to yeah, prove it absolutely absolutely <laughs> just give me visitation rights you know? so, uh, anyway so this is sort of going to be maybe the flagship for my dream circle stuff you know say so, hey of course we know paradoxing is not reproducible sure. genetically but but still doesn't make, make it any less cool doesn't make it any less cool right so I do this, and then I also do the highway stuff, and uh, do a lot of cool stuff with the highway stuff. But I didn't bring any of that with me today. But uh, cool, man. So it's a lot of fun. A lot awesome, of fun. Tom. Yeah, man. So. You're, you're a good guy to sit down and talk to, man. You got such a nice, you got such a nice, warm, wholesome vibe, man. You, you feel good. All right, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for coming down, and sitting with hey, us. Hey, I love it. Thank I you for taking the time that. for me. Yeah, it's man. an honor. Thank you, Brian. Yes, sir. Thanks. Yeah, man. Thank you, Tom, for coming on. It was a pleasure, sir. All of Tom's information is going to be down in the description down below, folks. You want to go check out the current projects he has going on and the animals he has available. Next week, we're going to be sitting down with my buddy Brent, who is the co-founder and CEO of Venom Life Gear. And until then, you've been watching Triple B TV. Y'all take care. Gotcha. The best audio possible. I was using the lav mics before, which okay. it still works. Yeah, it still works, right. Uh, not as good. Yeah, especially with now, maybe not so bad, but these are much more directional, so like you talk about the mic, just get that. Just kind of always make it better, man, you know? Better, the better I can make it, the better everything. Right, right. Give Phil a minute. He's going to go on a couple more times till they get that winner picked. Yeah. We'll, we'll give him his, we'll give him his moment. I, I didn't buy a ticket this year, so it doesn't matter. Neither did I. I've been able to add it to... Um... All right, we got a winner. The winning ticket is... All right, we got a winner. <laughs> <laughs> so Take what... I thought we were winner, done. Someone... There's, there's always the aftershock. <laughs> <laughs> stop and start. Stop and start. So... The, the... Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I went to the bank and changed it all for quarters, so we got a bag of money for it. Thanks, Phil. <laughs> yep, that was me. <laughs>